Uh, today I will start uh, the third lecture which is on uh, shear strength of soil. So, this uh, shear strength of soil is very important for um, load carrying capacity calculation of foundation. So, the two major parameters that is uh, cohesion and friction angle of the soil, these will be required for bearing capacity calculation. So, now uh, in the shear strength, uh, I will discuss that what are the tests by which we can determine these two shear strength parameters, uh, cohesion and the friction uh, uh, through laboratory. So, first uh, we should know that what is shear strength of a soil. So, the shear strength of a soil is uh, can be represented by cohesion plus sigma n tan phi. So, this is the uh, uh, sigma n, this is a sigma n which is the applied normal stress on the soil. So, here the sigma is the total normal stress on the plane of shearing C is the cohesion and phi is the angle of friction. Now, this shear strength expression is in terms of total stress. Similarly, in terms of effective stress also we can write the similar type of expression which is C prime plus sigma dash tan phi dash. Here, this is sigma dash or sometimes it is written as sigma bar is the total stress minus pore water pressure. So, he, here the this shear strength is written in terms of effective stress. So, in, in, in my second lecture, I have already discussed what is the effective stress. So, uh, as I mentioned that when uh, we apply the stress or load on a soil. So, this stresses are transmitted through contact between soil particles and through the water. So, the stresses which is transmitted through the contact between two between the soil particles or is termed as the effective stress and the stresses which is transmitted through the water because water is an incompressible material. So, so that is why the, if the stress is transferred um, to the water, so a pressure is developed. So, that is called pore water pressure. So, the total stress we can uh, write as a effective stress plus the pore water pressure or effective stress will be the total stress minus the pore water pressure. So, this effective stress in terms of effective stress also we can write the shear strength parameter and that is the shear strength is C dash here C dash is the cohesion it is effective cohesion and this phi dash is the effective friction. So, similarly this is the Mohr Coulomb envelope or the failure envelope where this angle is this envelope phi and this angle c is the cohesion of the soil and this axis is sigma is the normal stress and y axis is the tau is the shear stress. Now, uh, in this lecture, I will discuss how this norm, uh, failure envelope is determined. So, by the uh, test so, uh, in this part we will discuss the stress and how we are getting this uh, more circle and from this more circle how uh, we are getting this uh, failure envelope and from this failure envelope how we are getting the uh, C and phi. So, these things will be discussed in this lecture. Now, so this is similar the failure envelope in terms of effective stress. So, now, the test, uh, what are the test we can conduct to determine these two parameters C and phi? 
So, these tests are direct shear test generally uh, is for sands, then triaxial test conducted on sand and clay is both and the unconfined compressive strength the, the C is generally conducted for clay soil. So, the strength for the unconfined compressive strength test the shear strength of a saturated clay where we assume that phi value is equal to 0. So, now in the triaxial test we have three triaxial test that is consolidated drain test, consolidated undrained test and consolidated unconsolidated undrained test. So, these are termed as C D C U U U because C is for consolidated. So, there is a C means consolidated C and drain D and similarly C U consolidated undrained U. Similarly, U is U unconsolidated and undrained. Now, when you uh, explain about the triaxial test, so you will find that there are two stages of loading. One is the consolidation, another is the drainage. So, when, uh, when we apply first initially we apply the all round pressure or uh, water pressure around the soil sample and then we allow this soil to consolidate and that is whether we it allow the consolidation or not depending upon that whether it is the consolidated or unconsolidated test. So, we can determine based on that. In the next stage we apply the load or debitary stress where also we control the drainage. Now, be depending on that whether we allow the drainage or not we can say that it is drained or undrained. So, that in this way we can conduct three types of test. And the next one is the unconfined compressive strain test. So, where we do not apply any all round pressure ok. Here sigma 3 value is 0. Generally, the pressure which is we are applying throughout the, around the soil by uh, water is termed as a sigma 3. So, now So, this is the first test, uh, this is the direct shear test. So, in the direct shear test, we have a direct shear test box where it has two hubs. So, it is basically a horizontal load is applied. So, we, we apply a shearing on, on in the soil sample. So, here the this is the failure plane or the shear plane. So, we can say in this test that that failure plane is predetermined. So, this is the failure plane by which the soil will fail. So, we apply the shearing load and we also apply the normal load. So, here under different normal load we apply the shearing and then we determine the what is the shear stress for different conditions. So, here we can see in this uh, figure. So, this is the normal load we are applying and here this is uh, this is a shear or horizontal stress we are applying and we are measuring this horizontal stress by this proving ring and we are applying the dial gauges which also measure the horizontal deformation as well as the vertical deformation of the sample. So, that after completion of the test, we will get a shear stress shear, shear displacement relationship. So, this is the shear stress and shear displacement relationship for dif two different types of soil. One is dense sand, another is loose sand. You can see in the dense sand, we, we can get a peak value. So, we will get a failure load or the peak load and here for the loose sand, we will not get any peak value. So, the stress will increase as we uh, increases the displacement and finally, the both the curve will close to each other after some displacement. So, this zone, this strength of the soil is called the residual strength and this is the peak value of the uh, peak load that this dense sand is subjected. So, this is the typical loose sand and dense sand curve stress shear stress versus shear displacement curve. Similarly, 
if I as I mentioned that in this test also we can measure the vertical deformation of the soil sample. So, change in height of the soil sample. So, if it is compression then it is downward and if it is extension it is in the upward. So, here this is also typical change in height of the sample and the shear resistance of the shear deform displacement of the um, typical curve for loose sand and dense sand. So, for the dense sand we can see initially there is a compression and then the sample there is the ex expansion and for the loose sand it is always the compression. So, which means that we can say that when when we apply the shearing. So, for the dense sand initially the volume of the soil is decreased and after that the volume of the soil increases and for the loose sand the volume of the soil always decreases as we apply the shearing. So, this is the one of the reasons is that if if it is a suppose loose sand. So, this is the soil particles and for the loose sand. So, this is for the and similarly the particle arrangement for the dense sand. similar to this, this is the dense sand. Now, when the shearing is applied here, so what will happen as, as it is expected for the for the loose sand, the amount of void is, is more compared to the dense sand. You can see that in the dense sand, the arrangement of the particle is such that that amount of void within the particles is less. So, when you apply the shearing, what will happen this this grain particles now it roll over this particle and it will now move to this position and this one will move to this position and also this one will move to this position or if i take a different color so this this red is the new position of the particles after shearing. Similarly, for the dense sand the new position of the particles will be like this. So, that means that because of the shearing this dense loose sand become dense or that is why the because the air amount of void decreases and that is why the always the volume decreases. But for the dense sand initially the this dense sand become further dense and that is why the volume of the soil decreases, but after that it will this volume increases because the orientation changes in such that the voids between the soil also increases. So, that is why this is the if I typically say that for the for the loose sand. So, this is the initial orientation. and for the dense sand this is the typical orientation. So, after shearing, so it will be like this and here it will be like this. So, the voids in between the particles will increase due to the shearing in case of dense sand and it will decrease in case of loose sand due to the 
sharing. So, this is a very important thing and these things we will be discussing later on when you discuss about uh, some SPT correction things. So, next one is a triaxial test here as I mentioned that here we will apply a sigma 3 or sigma c which is confining pressure. So, here this is a triaxial sample generally the standard size of the triaxial sample that we, we use is 76 millimeter height and 38 millimeter diameter. And this is sample this is the sample where this is the membrane and this is the water where this uh, through this water we applied the sigma 3 value and we allow the soil to consolidate and then the next stage we apply the load and so that this is the debitoric, debitoric uh, stress. So, we applied. So, debitoric stress is nothing but sigma 1 which is axial stress minus sigma 3 or sigma c which is the confining pressure. Now, similarly for the uh, like densian and loose sand in the triaxial test also we will get the dense sand or over consolidated clay and we have the loose sand and normally consolidated clay. I have already discussed about the over consolidated clay and the normally consolidated clay that if the present applied stress on a soil is less than the previously experienced maximum stress of the soil then the soil is treated as over consolidated soil and if the present applied stress on a soil is equal to or greater than the maximum uh, stress that soil is experienced then the soil is called as a normally consolidated clay. So, for the normally consolidated clay the stress change behavior is similar to loose sand are for the over consolidated clay the similar to the dense sand that I have already explained. Similar to the uh, volume change here also in the triaxial sample we, um, we can measure the volume change and in the volume change also the over consolidated clay which is similar to the dense sand and normally consolidated clay which is similar to the loose sand. The next uh, one that we are talking about is the unconfined compression test. The di major difference between the unconfined compression test and the triaxial test that in the triaxial test we are applying a sigma 3 or sigma c that means the uh, all round pressure around the soil through the water. But here sigma 3 or sigma c value is 0 we are not applying if you look at this uh, sample here we are not applying any stress around uh, the soil we are not applying any pressure. So, here only sample we are applying the load uh, and that, that load is measured by the proving ring and deformation is measured by the di this um, dial gauges. So, now the that is why if the sigma c value is 0 that if the sigma c value is 0. So, the debitoric stress will be equal to the sigma 1 or the axial stress. So, now if I draw the Mohr circle, so this is the sigma and the sigma axis, x axis is the uh, sigma axis and the y axis is the trough axis. So, as the sigma 3 value is 0, so the Mohr circle will start with 0 0 and this value is sigma 1. So, that is why we can write the undrained cohesion of the soil is equal to the unconfined compressive strength of the soil divided by 2 because this is the C or C u C u and sigma 1 is equal to q u. So, this is q u is the unconfined compressive strength. So, the value the strength that we will get we have to divide it by 2 to get the undrained cohesion of the soil. So, with this I am uh, finishing this lecture 3 and in the next lecture 4, I will start the soil exploration part. Thank you.